So today we're going to build upon the A star pathing uh, map that we made in another video. I'll put the link in the description. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to make the map and we're going to place a player somewhere in the map. Now we're not going to work on movement of the player or anything right now. We're just going to get the player on the map in an empty tile. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to actually make a new scene that will hold the game. And I actually went into the project settings and I changed the main scene to the game scene because I like to click this little play button to run my programs. But then you, you add the A star pathing map uh, scene and then we're also going to add a player scene. And then this player scene, it's going to be a pretty simple scene. Just a kinematic body with a sprite collision shape so the kinematic body doesn't complain and then a 2d camera that I'm gonna also set to the current camera that way we don't have to play where's Waldo every time we run the program to see if the player ended up in the right spot and we're also going to add the player to the player group and we'll look into why we do that here in just a second so in the a star pathing script. We added just a few things, not a ton, but we're going to add a signal that says when the map is ready and we're going to add an array to keep track of the open spaces on the map. So in the ready function we're going to make the map just like before and then we're going to find the open spaces and then we will tell the player that the map is ready and that it should try and find a place from the array uh, that we're going to pass to it. Now the reason why I'm doing this is I don't want the player to try and find a spot before the map is done. I want to make sure the map is finished and then the player is going to try and find a spot. Now it can be kind of tricky when you look at the game scene that the A star pathing node and the player node are siblings and sometimes when siblings try and talk to siblings, it's tough to set up the connections between them. Because when you set up a, an absolute or relative path, like with these three, uh, what those are basically saying is from the perspective of the A star node here, it wants the parent of that node to look for the other child named the player and it works in this instance so I mean it's go up one level and then find the player node and like I said it works but if you build your program bigger and change things around add child nodes add parent nodes in between the game and the A star pathing node or the player it all breaks and you have to come back and re type this in the script every time but an easier way is just to add the player to the player group and then just use this function, the get tree, get nodes and group, and then loop through. Uh, the reason why I use this one opposed to just getting a single one uh, is we're going to, I just like using the same code for when we are going to have multiple players or if we're going to have multiple enemies, we're going to use the same code, uh, just a different group to place them again for enemies or items and what this is going to do is we're going to use a signal and what this is saying is when we call the map ready signal we want to connect it to this will be the player node through this array that we get um, from the get tree get nodes in tree and we want the player to use the function reset position so if we look in the player script, it only has one function, which is reset the position. And it's expecting this argument of open spaces, which is going to be an array that we find right before we send the signal. We're going to run this function. Uh, we're going to clear out the array. That way, if we run the map multiple times, that we don't get uh, old spaces. Uh, we want to always have fresh array. And we're going to loop through every cell in the map. We're going to get cell and see if it's a floor. And then if it is a floor, we'll append it. 
Now we have to remember that when you get cell, it's going to get the cell number and not necessarily the position that we want. So when we go to the player, when we apply the position, we're going to multiply it by the tile size to get the player into the right spot. Uh, and this is just picking a random number from the size of the array that's passed to it. So I guess one more thing is when you send or when you emit a signal, you can pass extra arguments along with the signal uh, that will be put into the function.